Do you see your roles as educational? In other words, is that a piece of maybe a big piece of what you're doing with your organizations? I'll jump in. Yeah. <laughs> I think that I think it's about having a different view of what's possible within, you know, what we have in front of us and that we're capable of change and that, you know, a lot of change is um you know, positive change, it's, it's mutually reinforcing to capitalism, not mutually exclusive. And, you know, having been in the ESG field my whole career and watching it go from um, so niche to, it, you know, everybody says they do ESG investing now. I mean, it's become so mainstream and the capital flows into this space have been unbelievable. And that's, you know, that is, that's been part of an education and a learning curve and also a change in society that has heard, hey, there's a better way of doing this and investing our money um, toward better ends. And so, you know, you have, and so, so, you know, maybe, maybe with a BlackRock, it starts with, well, this is about marketing. <laughs> but then they start to like, you know, they start to resource that area and they start to, you know, reach out on proposals like our sexual harassment proposal and things like they I'm not saying that they did that, but one of the big ones did. And, you know, and 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 then they, you know, they're 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 there and they're participating in a right. different way. So, yeah, I mean, I I think that's why I brought up earlier when I was talking about Exxon, sometimes it's not just about one company. It's about what's happening in the public dialogue and how are we changing as a society? And then, and then how is the money flowing and how is government changing in response? And this confluence of forces that come together because nothing changes in a silo. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I think I, you know, where we operate as Arjuna, we're kind of like, we're at the, the bleeding edge, you know, we're moving the conversation forward. We're going to be the first ones to ask about methane reporting. We're going to be the first ones to ask about carbon asset risk, the first ones to ask about pay equity. And then, and then be part of the education because it's not just going to be us that does that, that do it. And so it's, right. you know, what we, what we're probably really good at is being part of like capturing what's in the zeitgeist and what's right for change, but it takes all these forces to actually shift. But I think that how ESG investing has changed over the last I mean, two years even, it's pretty remarkable. Uh, Trace, do you wanna to add to that? And I let, let me tell you, the three of you, cause we're about to move to uh, questions and answers or questions from the audience of whom there are, it looks like a hundred and hundred plus, but is there any evidence that ESG investing produces results? I think $500 billion has been divested from Exxon, but Exxon is still going strong. So that's a, a challenge that the, the, that you can ponder for a minute or two uh, while Tracy, you get in um, on the question of education. Well, depending on how one defines education, but I agree with Natasha that we're in the business of changing minds. And to tie it to Roger's earlier comment around the history of this country and, and changing minds, um, I, I, like look at the New Deal. It was about government-led recovery. Then we entered a whole um, few decades where it's all about markets. You know, all solutions are market-based solutions. We don't need the government. And whether um, it's hard to like stereotype and generalize these big arcs in history, but I really think that we're in the middle of the era of really making public-private partnerships work in new ways and that governments and, and markets working together can produce more meaningful and enduring results. But in order to get there, um, and you asked the question earlier, Lee, like, is it even appropriate for the private sector to participate? We all have, um, you know, grow up with, based on our own experiences, um, uh, assumptions about the world. And how do we, quote, think again? I'm reading Adam Grant's book, Think Again. How do we unsettle those assumptions? How do we open our minds, I, I think, and, and think again? Uh, at the end of the day, good judgment is all about having the skill and the will to open our minds. And uh, 
and and ironically, sometimes I even think that some of the most educated people I come across have sometimes the most fixed mindset, right? So, so yes, we are in the business of changing minds, and whether you know this particular approach or that particular approach is right is really in the discourse and the debates that make all our ideas better. So, yes, in a way, we are in education, I suppose. And and Roger, I see you nodding as well. Look, I agree. In that we're in education in many different ways. Uh, first, the first part of education is just imparting facts, right? And so, you know, the, the fact that un, that um, income inequality started to pick up in the 70s and has moved forward, it's some of the Raj Chetty results and other results. So that's educational. You open people's eyes by saying, you know, here are some facts, that's education. The second part of education, I think, is very much about imagining what solutions might be and challenging people. You think about a really good teacher through Q&A, Socratic method at a law school, et cetera, case method at a business school. They challenge people to take these facts and start to imagine what solutions might look like. And so I think we're hearing you know, from our ESG colleagues here and others, uh, you know, there are different ways to actually be an, a capitalist, to be an investor. Um, that's educational. Um, and so I think that's very helpful. The third thing, obviously, is a little bit of this sort of sweep of history discussion. You know, we, public sector, private sector, is this actually an era of, uh, of public-private partnerships? I don't know, but it's a very interesting question. So planting seeds is, is really important. So I think we're all in the business of educating people. The other part of education is disabusing people of uh, false notions. So Natasha and Tracy both know that for many, many years, there's this theory of the case that if you were involved in ESG investing, you had to give up good returns. Now, I think the evidence is starting to show, I think Natasha talked about this, that doing the right thing can also be very profitable. You know, closing wage gaps, um, uh, and we know closing income gaps, and there's a lot of modeling that shows if we do that, the economy overall would be much larger. So there's a part of education which is disabusing people of false notions. And I think we're all attempting to do that as well. 